day due to the weather. It's been raining most of the morning and it's not giving up like it should do, like it was supposed to, or the weather van said it was supposed to. So we're out again today with our backup kit. Oh yes, HSO, HSA 94R. in hand today is this little Texas Mercata hedge also known as a U. as well as that it's got a, a bit of a stray hawthorn and a bit of a stray bramble in the middle which shouldn't be there which we're gonna once we get it pruned we're gonna have to put it off at the base and possibly try and dig out there's another one there so First cut of the year for this one. This only gets two months a year. So build around a circle in a cemetery with some nice lavenders and a bit of uh, floral plant put in in there, and then back out to the side. And same again. Just struggles a bit there in places. The hedge it's never come true in them bits. I don't know whether it's had something spilt ground or whether it's just a couple of other plants. So that's the plan and back to the start. So she'll get you a bit of footage. Stay tuned. So guys, the recent wet weather gives us a chance to catch up on hedges and shrubs we need to prune on our contracts. This hedge here, common name for it is U, and anybody who works on Latin names will recognise it as Taxus, is a relatively slow-grown slow plant. We contracted to cut this hedge twice a year, so at the end of July for the first cut, and then early November for the second, and that will tend to keep it tidy all through the winter. Depending on the type of hedges, some can be more high maintenance than others. Some private hedges we do, we cut five to six times a year just to keep them tidy because they grow that fast. As you notice, we're in a cemetery here and on top of the hedges we cut the grass, maintain the trees, put up hanging baskets, maintain the floral and shrub areas, power clean footpaths, as well as even carrying out the burials. So it's sort of a full maintenance package we carry out. And we've also just been awarded two new cemetery contracts, uh, which is good news for us. The stray hawthorn and brambles you saw at the start of the video um, that were coming through the hedges. If you have similar problems with things like this coming through your hedges, it's best if possible to try and dig them out at the base. But if it isn't possible to get in where it's really tight access and between the where the plants are grown, um, you can cut them at the base and then just monitor them and make sure they don't come up again just by regular regular cutting down. Um, the waste on the jobs as well as other grass we accumulate goes to a local recycling centre. Um, this goes through a process of being turned into compost which we purchase from time to time to use on jobs. And larger hedge pruning jobs we do goes straight through our chipper and the mulch is reused on the shrub areas that, um, to keep the weeds down, basically. Um, once the top of the hedge is cut, the, the important thing is to either rake the hedge or to run your hand over the hedge just to get rid of any loose bits because if you leave them on the top, they, after a week or two, they'll go brown and the hedge will look unsightly. But as well as that, you will get the odd bit popping up that, uh, that the hedge cut hasn't caught, so... By running your hand through, you just free them pieces up and it just means that you get a nice clean cut and you won't come back in a week's time and see one or two bits that um, need you to, to run over the job again. Or if it's for a client, they won't be ringing you up and saying you've missed some um, you missed some bits on the hedges. Um, so yeah, try and run your hand along the top or brush brush the top, anything really, just to, just to loosen that up and that will... Um, that will have you a nice finish and leave it in good condition for a number of weeks till it starts to grow all over again. Um, cleaning up this site, it's not such as like a private garden where you need to really maintain and clean up 
percent of the horizons. The the ideal situation here is we could progress a couple of days later. So as long as we get ninety percent of the horizons raked up, the the few small bits that's left after we've blown can be um, shredded with the mower. So the job will will still look tidy when we leave it, but in a couple of days' time, um, we'll shred it and it'll um, it'll tidy the edge up a bit more. So that's pretty much it for this job. Um, the piece you saw at the start that I mentioned struggled to grow at the side of the hedge. What we do with areas like that is we just take the top off them, um, just lightly trim and trim the sides and hopefully over time they will, um, they will bush out and this hedge will thicken up nicely all the way around. So you'll have to excuse the picture quality. It has been a very damp and mis miserable day here, as you can tell. Um, the rain has never stopped all the way through. And I shall talk about that in a minute. Um, but yeah, nice, clean, tidy job finished. And that should take care of this till November time. So hope you liked. Um, hope you liked what you saw with the hedge. And there will be more videos to come of hedge pruning now that we're into hedge pruning season. There will be a number of, um, of other hedges we're going to be cutting over the next few weeks. So I'll get some footage of different types. Some that you'll see that are um, faster growing than, than others which need more care and attention. So guys, you'll notice while doing that job that it never stopped raining and it's still raining now. Um, and just a topic of conversation while we're on the subject of rain is waterproofs. I know a lot of people struggle with waterproofs. Um, people say they sweat with waterproofs on. I've worn the set that's on the, on the video there. Not the same set, but various sets of Berghaus Gore-Tex. And I've worn them for over 10 years after struggling to find decent waterproofs and ones that you sweat in more and get wet more and I've found these the Berghaus kit to be really good and I've stuck with it for 10 years yes it's a bit pricey a pair of trousers are around the 80 pound and the coat was about 200 but it's worth it to keep dry and this t-shirt I've got on here now is worn dry there's no there's no wet around the collar or anything um, so it is worth investing in a good set if you're working outdoors constantly. It's worth investing in a good set of waterproof, um, waterproof coat. So hope that helps and hope you like the video. If you, if you do, if you like, give it a like and also subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. That would be great. So thanks for watching guys. See you on the next one.